Hello everyone and welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and today's video is our benchmarking demonstration of the NVIDIA GeForce GTX Titan, which we have right here. It is now the fastest single GPU video card that is currently available and I have been putting it through its paces for the past few days along with some help from my friend Kyle. Now I wanted to talk a little bit about the methodology for the testing as well as the uh, the price points and the kind of intended use that the, the GTX Titan comes in at because it is definitely a premium card, it's got a thousand dollar price point right now and it's really geared towards a specific segment of users as well as a specific type of use that you might be using it for. Uh, that said, 1080 gaming is not going to be the forte of the GTX Titan. You might get improvements and definitely some higher end or some newer games such as Crisis 3 you actually do get a nice boost even at 1080 going with the Titan uh, versus something like a GTX 680. But really this is geared towards high resolution gaming such as 2560 by 1600 or 2560 by 1440 multiple monitor gaming such as 5760 by 1080 as well as people who might be using it for its uh, massive GPU compute capabilities given that it comes with 2688 CUDA cores and about like I don't know off the top of my head but I think it's something like eight times the amount of uh, double precision floating point uh, capabilities uh, by way of the CUDA cores. That being said, uh, first off, all of our benchmarks today are going to be run at 1080 as well as 2560 by 1600, so you can see a bit of a comparison there. And next up, let's go into our comparison benchmarks, because when you're looking at the numbers for the Titan, you might be wondering, well, how does this scale up against other video cards or other GPUs that might be out there? So, to go over our comparisons, first off, of course, we have the former fastest single GPU video card from the NVIDIA stable. That is the GeForce GTX 680. So I have a reference model right here. And by the way, all of our video cards as well as our testing hardware for this video is all gonna be tested at stock manufacturer uh, clock speed. So some of them are slightly overclocked by the manufacturer. Others are running just at their uh, bare stock speeds. Uh, to give you guys a little bit of a better performance uh, numbers when you're giving a comparison out of the box, uh, overclocking we will probably be going into in a future video. So first off we have the GTX 680 so you guys can see moving from A to B how that stacks up. But of course we also want to have some rep representation from the red team so we have an AMD video card right here. The current fastest single GPU video card from AMD is going to be video cards based on the AMD Radeon HD 7970 gigahertz edition. So uh, representing that particular GPU is going to be our, our HIS 7970 Radeon HD Gigahertz Edition Ice QX2. So this has a custom cooler, but the PCB itself is the reference design. The GPU is the reference design, and it's running at the reference clock speeds for the 7970 Gigahertz Edition. So there's our fastest single GPU cards from both AMD and from NVIDIA, apart from the Titan, of course. Where do we go from there? Well, I want to give it a at least a little bit of a challenge. So I'm going to go all the way to the top. Let's go ahead and pull out the Ares 2. This, in my testing thus far, has been the fastest single video card uh, that I have personally tested. And um, I know what you guys are going to say. You're going to say, Paul, that's the Ares 2, and that has two GPUs in it. This actually has two of the 7970 gigahertz edition GPUs that our uh, HIS card has. And yes, maybe not quite as fair or not quite as direct of a comparison to the Titan, this being a single monolithic GPU. Uh, that might be a better comparison to a GTX 690. Unfortunately, we don't have a GTX 690 available. So I guess that's kind of about as far as we can take it when we're giving a benchmark comparison. To, hey. hey, Paul, I just finished benchmarking. Uh, what do you want me to do with this? The, you have a Titan? Yeah. Wait, wait, is that a Titan? Yeah. Dude. Well, I think that settles it then, and I have to say thank you to Kyle for showing up at just the right time. So here is a rundown of our benchmark comparison video cards. We got the HIS Radeon HD 7970 GHz edition for the red team. We have the EVGA GeForce GTX 680 for the green team, and these are representing the types of video cards that us mere mortals are probably going to find a little bit more attainable. But moving up into the super enthusiast territory, we first have, of course, a single NVIDIA GeForce GTX Titan, and those are representing uh, our single GPU card configurations and the $1,000 price point starting off there for one of the Titans. Moving up to the $1,500 price point, we have the Ares 2 with two, just two, GTX, I'm sorry, with two Radeon HD 7970 GHz edition GPUs. And then finally, moving up to the $2,000 price point, we're going to be testing two NVIDIA GeForce GTX Titans in two-way SLI. 
and we'll show you guys the results for those. But speaking of results, I have actually some new benchmarks that I'm going to be running. Uh, I have some synthetics because I do like synthetics as far as doing a direct card comparison, although I know those don't always translate into actual useful numbers for you guys, but I do like to show how they perform. So we've got 3D Mark Vantage and 3D Mark 11 that we've been running in the past. I'm also adding the new 3D Mark Fire Strike Extreme benchmark test, which the uh, Titans and SLI just destroyed. Uh, we also have Unigen Heaven 4.0, so the new version of Heaven 4.0. Uh, we also have Unigen Valley 1.0, another synthetic uh, benchmark, uh, which looks just beautiful, and we're using the Extreme HD settings or equivalent for all of those at 1080 as well as 2560 by 1600. As far as real world games, we're going to be throwing Metro 2033, Battlefield 3, Borderlands 2, Alien vs. Predator, Stalker, Call of Pripyat, uh, as well as we've now been added Dirt Showdown, Crisis 3, and Far Cry 3. So uh, we're running all of those very popular games right now to show you the performance comparison between all of them. Speaking of performance comparison, I did want to show you guys the specs for these cards side by side. So let's take a look at that. So our four video cards lined up right here, the GeForce Titan Ares 2, GTX 680, and 7970. Titan's the code name GK110 based on the Kepler manufacturing ar architecture. The 680 is the GK104. Both of our uh, AMD cards are using Tahiti XT2 GPUs. That's Radeon HD 7970 gigahertz edition. And the Ares 2, of course, has two of them. You can also see the frequencies that the these video cards are running at, as well as the peak testing frequency, since all of these cards are now making use of some form of boost clock, which basically enhances the GPU frequency uh, when an actual load is put on the card. So peak uh, frequency for the Titans was 992.9, and that is a factor of the temperature that they're running at, and these were always running at 80 degrees uh, Celsius, because that is what they're intended to do. 992.9 was pretty stable across the board for that one. 1050 megahertz for the Ares 2 as well as the 7970 uh, gigahertz edition and uh, the Ares 2 will actually boost clock up to 1100 megahertz total. Uh, the GTX 680 meanwhile is running along at 1084 megahertz. You also notice a significant addition of CUDA cores for the uh, Titan versus the GTX 680. We also have our stream processors listed there for the Ares 2 and the 7970 gigahertz edition. Bear in mind that the CUDA cores and stream processors are not necessarily directly comparable, but I did want to include those nonetheless. For memory, our Titan has 6 gigabytes of GDDR5 and you can double that for our SLI configuration. Ares 2, meanwhile, also has 6 gigabytes, but that's split 3 gigs for each of its GPUs. The GTX 680 has 2 gigabytes, and the 7970 gigahertz edition has 3 gigabytes. Also of note is that most of these uh, memory packets are running along at about 1500 megahertz. However, the Ares 2 does overclock from, directly from ASUS to 1650. We also have a bit fatter of a memory interface for the, mate, uh, for the Titan as well as the Ares 2 and the 7970, 384-bit uh, versus the 680, which is 256-bit, as well as the rest of the specs there. I also wanted to point out we're running the latest beta drivers, which I normally don't do, but uh, I did want to give the best performance possible, particularly for uh, running Crisis 3 and Far Cry 3, which has some updates. So 13.2 beta 6 for the AMD cards. And uh, for NVIDIA, we're running 314.07 for the 680 and 314.09, which is the Titan-specific driver uh, on the NVIDIA side. And also, every single one of these cards running along at PCI Express Gen 3, and that was double-checked to make sure because NVIDIA cards sometimes are a little bit finicky, finicky about doing that on an X79 platform. That said, here's also a look at our test bed. Uh, it's an Intel Core i7-3960X, uh, Asus Rampage 4 Formula, 16 gigs of G-Skill Trident X memory, just running at 1600 speed to represent sort of a baseline configuration, SanDisk Ultra Plus 256 gigabyte SSD, Thermaltake Tough Power 1350 watt power supply, and Windows 7 Ultimate 64-bit. And here are your benchmarks.
So there you have it, guys, our benchmark comparison and, well, what can be said about the numbers that we've just viewed. I will say that, well, you do get more performance for paying more money for your video cards, and uh, as you probably saw in most of the tests, two-way SLI on the Titans was dominating just about everything, followed up by the Ares II in most tests, followed up again by the single Titan, and then followed up by the 680 or the 7970 gigahertz edition, depending on what test you are looking at. Now, again, the Titans definitely excel much more in the 2560 by 1600 tests. There are some actual 1080 tests that you might have noticed where the, uh, the SLI configuration with the Titan or even the single Titan compared to the single GPU cards over here really wasn't giving you that much of a boost. And again, that's because the Titan's really uh, geared towards enthusiasts, folks who are playing at really high resolutions, multiple monitors, uh, 4K displays coming up in the future, of course, and that sort of thing. So I guess it really comes down to a question of, is it worth your money? Are you, enth are you an enthusiast? Do you want the best of the best bleeding edge hardware? And do you have the money to spend, I guess? Because obviously we don't want anyone taking out a, a mortgage or anything like that to, to pay for, for this type of hardware. I would say that for some people, yes, that's going to be the case because these cards, uh, as well as giving the performance that they did, also ran very, very quietly. Uh, we don't have a formal uh, acoustics test set up quite yet, but I can just tell you from my uh, listening experience, very quiet cards. Uh, they stayed, I want to say they stayed very cool, but these cards are always going to run at 80 degrees Celsius. It's actually going to mess with our temperature tests in the future because uh, GPU Boost 2.0, uh, temperature really isn't a factor. The temperature is the point that the card will try to hit. It will try to give you as much performance as it can up to that temperature point. Again, that's a factor of GPU Boost 2.0, which you can find out more in our Titan overview video. So I'll leave it up to you guys. Uh, if you find the uh, Titans, especially in SLI configuration, to be just that good of performance that you think it is going to be the best of the best, well, there's not too much to go from there unless you're testing it against quad SLI with 690s or a couple of the Aries 2 or three-way or four-way Titan configurations. But that's another video. That's going to wrap it up for this one, guys. I hope you've enjoyed. I'm Paul with Newegg TV. We've been looking at some benchmark numbers for the NVIDIA GeForce GTX Titan. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next time.